as I mentioned, um, I'll share just, there are only like three or four truths that I've captured in this presentation. One is just evolution, which is not rocket science, but um, it, it applies to brands too. Uh, I'm gonna share with you in a second, the Motorola brand is 80 years old. Um, and the reality is, is that it was kind of even formed before 80 years. And so to be a brand architect and, and even a curator of a brand is a pretty interesting um, opportunity. You have to look at what you've done in the past, what you want to be in the future, things like W Helmets or LinkedFA.com, you're starting from scratch, whereas, you know, there is no history, there's no equity. What do you want to be when you grow up? And even when you do grow up, how do you change that again? So um, the truth is there's constant change. You, you have to reinvent. And I'll say before I even get to the end, I mean, I think Motorola, unfortunately, in the past couple of years kind of let some grass grow underneath the brand. And, and while they were trying to catch up with the, the apples of the world, um, they hadn't given enough uh, a thought to that of late. But I'll show you where they're at. So again, Motorola, um, interesting company. Started in 1928 with the Galvin brothers. Um, <clears throat> Motorola's name is, comes from uh, the motor car and Victrola. Motorola's uh, first car radio was invented by the Galvin brothers. Um, and by the way, I'm just picking a couple points that I think are interesting over 80 years. Um, I used to have the, um, the Motorola Museum underneath my budget, so I got to see all this cool stuff. They actually, in a, um, it's like a bomb warehouse underneath the uh, main headquarters. It's fire, you know, retardant, uh, hurricane resistance, and all this stuff is housed down there. 1940 was the first, uh, you think it was the cell, cell phone, but it's not. It's the handy talkie. It's, this is the first radio, and they used this in World War I and World War II. It is the predecessor, though, of the cell phone. Uh, 1969, Motorola did all the radio equipment to, and I'll show you a clip here in a minute, of uh, the first words from the moon, which I think is pretty darn cool. And then boom, there it is, the brick. 1983, the first cell phone. Um, when I first started at Motorola, I'm walking around my first week. For why they asked a marketing guy to go to an engineering meeting, I do not know. But I'm introducing myself, and they're like, oh, you know, uh, what's your name? How long have you been here? It's my first week. And so what's your name? This guy says, Ray Sokola. Really, Ray, how long have you been here? He says, 35 years. Like, I haven't been anywhere for more than <laughs> three. Um, and I said, so, what do you do? And he's like, well, I don't mean to be humble, but I helped invent the cell phone. You know, it's kind of like, oh. Um, talk about paradigm shifts. And by the way, that was another topic I wanted to get into, paradigm shifts. But um, definitely, Motorola was a neat company because they were constantly inventing things that people didn't know they needed yet. Um, one uh, bit of research they did around this time, some, the, in fact, this guy, Ray Sicola, shared with me. They said, well, we did this market research, and we asked housewives uh, uh, and women if they would want to possibly be in a grocery store and call their husband at work and kind of ask him instantaneously uh, what they might want for dinner or hey do you want a six pack of beer or you know what anything and they said why why would I do that what do you mean why would you do that because at that time um, if you think about families and the nucleus like the phone was in the center of the house and usually there was just one phone and it was the place that families made phone calls from there was, no one had ever thought to be in a car and make a phone call or be at the grocery store and make a phone call so What's interesting is people don't know what they don't know. Um, and the part of the fun of our jobs is introducing things to them and making them relevant. Um, and pretty neat. Anyway, then there was in 2004 the Razor, um, which again, complete paradigm shift. Um, the number one selling phone of all time, still to this day, um, although certainly Apple's catching up quickly.